Let's go, everybody! Are you ready to break open the vault? Are you ready to cash out the money? Is your team ready for the big prize? But how will you win the big prize if the game is running badly and you don't want to miss out on any of those cool visuals? So in this video we'll have a look how you can optimize your settings so you don't miss out on any of those cool visuals while still running the game as smoothly as shooting down walls with an RPG. Does that even make sense? Welcome to Henkes Gaming, guess who I am? And let's have a look at the game show of the year, the finals! Well, not entirely sure it's game show of the year. The year has only just started, who knows what is to come. Well, we're looking at the game on epic settings. Now, to be honest, the game looks great and performs great as well. I think I'm above 100 FPS at all times. Ranging from 100 to 140, I think is fair to say. Too bad I totally suck at these kind of multiplayer shooters. But well, we won't let that ruin the fun. I really like the idea of the destroyable world and would love to see this mechanism in a single player game. Well, looking at the graphics and performance, all great. But the game does lack HDR. Also, I didn't see my Windows enable auto HDR for this game. So, SDR it is. But oh well for now, I guess. Switching from the Epic to my optimized settings, it's a bit hard to really see how performance improves because I'm playing in a different map, but I think FPS range is now going from 110 to 160 FPS in the absolute best scenario. And well, that's a nice improvement. There is even some room to turn graphics down even a little bit more without sacrificing too much in graphics, but later in the video, as always, We'll have a look at each setting and each setting level to see how they change the graphics of the game and the performance. But first let's quickly stop watching how terrible I am at playing the game and have a look at the optimized settings. So welcome to the settings. I set the game to full screen, but windowed full screen will do just as well if you're happy with your desktop resolution. I leave frame generation disabled as my TV doesn't support VRR. Going to VSync, yes, I want that turned on of course, so no tearing for me. Frame rate limit, leave it at unlimited. Resolution scaling method. I pretty much stop testing these, as I always think, select the resolution scaling method of your video card. So if you have an Nvidia card, select DLSS. If you have an AMD card, select FSR, Intel, XCSS. The quality of your upscaling gets the name of your scaling method. So since we chose Nvidia DLSS, we set Nvidia DLSS to performance. If you really want the best graphics, set this to DLAA of course, but I usually think performance is a very good level to use, giving you great performance while not sacrificing too much in sharpness or detail. Now before we move on to the graphics settings of the menu, I just wanted to shout out the developers, Embark Studios, for making an awesome menu. Settings are explained really well and you get an FPS counter in the top right of the corner. Also, all settings are effective immediately when you change them, so you see the effect it has on your FPS right away. And not only the effect on FPS is clear right away, since the background in the menu is gone, you see the game world, so when you change a setting you immediately see the effect it has on the graphics as well. So that's really awesome, good job guys. Not that any one of Embark Studios will watch this video, but still. On to the graphics section then. Field of view, set it to whatever you like, performance wise it doesn't really matter. If you want a slight competitive win, set this to the max of 100. If you want your image not to look too warped, set it to 85 I think, that looks best if you ask me. I set motion blur and lens distortion to enabled, because I like the effects. Turning motion blur off does give you a very slightly higher FPS. Under ray tracing, set the NVIDIA RTX global illumination to dynamic low. And I wonder, is this setting disabled if you don't have an NVIDIA card? Let me know. Moving on to the quality section. You want an epic view distance. Anti-aliasing only matters when setting TAAU as an upscaling method. So I set the AA to low here, but it doesn't really matter. Set your shadows to high, your post-processing to high as well. But you could lower your post-processing to medium if you are in need of some more FPS. You will miss some effects, but I don't think you will really notice when playing. Textures to low. Usually texture quality doesn't help improve FPS, but I found here it does. And you want epic effects as well. But if you really need more FPS, 
highest effects level is still very good looking. So consider that if you are in need of even more frames per second. Foliage quality was a difficult one for me to test, so I set it to epic not to miss out on anything. And last, but certainly not least FPS wise, the global illumination resolution, which you can set to low, because graphics wise, it is last and least. Now those settings will make sure you win every single match from now on. And like me, who is terrible at playing against other people who actually know how to aim and shoot, and probably use a keyboard and mouse instead of a controller. But oh well, if this video helps you get those prizes in, please leave a like and stick around for the next part of this video where we'll dive into those fancy settings. We'll have a look at what different setting levels do and how they perform. So stick around for the next part of this show of the finals. So let's deep dive into the settings and we'll start off with the most interesting one I think. The NVIDIA RTX Global Illumination. And well, probably if you don't have an NVIDIA card, it's not interesting at all. For this test I was a bit inspired by Alex Vitalia's test from Digital Foundry, although he did a way better job than I did of course. So if you don't watch Digital Foundry, consider doing that. But well, let's do some fun stuff and do some preparations for this test by blowing things up. So to get some light to come into the room, I had to blow some things up, but well, it looks great I think. And this is with the RTX GI set to Dynamic Epic. Changing this setting to Static, so we have static lighting, we see that the room is dark all of a sudden, so the light from the hole in the roof doesn't even come in, which looks weird. So we don't want to use static lighting. Well, doing a different test, mainly just because I like blowing things up. I blew the roof of the building so light can come in through this hole in the ceiling. So the dynamic light setting has an effect on how much time it takes for the light to get cast. Probably has to do with less amount of rays being used. But let's have a look at each setting level and see how long it takes for the light to get around. I found that by switching this setting from static to the level I used, I could measure the time it takes for the room to be lit. I've added counters and stopped the counter when I thought the light was at its max. Yes, this very scientific test completely relies on my ability to see when the light is at its max value. But well, it's better than no test at all. So we see that the higher the setting, the quicker the light gets around and with sudden light switches, the lighting will be shining the quickest at the epic setting. High comes in at second place, but it almost makes no difference in time if you ask me. And medium and low are quite a bit slower to catch on. Frame rate wise, however, I think low has a slight improvement over the other settings. So I would suggest setting this setting to low. In the heat of the battle when walls are blown up, there is so much stuff going on on screen that I think you won't notice lighting that much. If you are shooting lights out on purpose to make a room darker or something like that, it may be a bit more jarring to see the light slowly fading away. So if that's one of your tactics, maybe leave this setting to epic. It will cost you FPS, but not that much. But low for the optimized settings, I think. Moving on, having a look at global illumination resolution. Since we're diving into light settings, thought we might have a look at this one as well. Looking at the setting levels side by side, 159 slash 160 on low versus 152 on epic. And graphics wise, I don't really notice anything. Now when I looked closely at this tree and then on the left of the tree, I did see some differences. Now at the branches on the tree, you can see some light on the leaves and the branches at the lower settings, which we don't see on the epic setting. But this is the only thing I noticed from this setting. So to be honest, for the win of 5% in FPS, I would suggest turning the GI resolution too low. Texture quality, a setting which usually has no impact on frame rate at all, when you have enough VRAM of course. But in the finals, the texture quality does have an impact on performance. At the epic level we see a frame rate of around 140. At low we see a frame rate around 144, so that's a win of 1 or 2%. It's not that much, but I really see no difference in the epic level or the low level, so I would say it's an easy win for a little bit of extra FPS. But I looked around a bit more and I did find a very very small difference. 
So in the training level you can go up a jump pad and then when you walk towards some boxes you can spot this difference. In the reflection of these boxes, with the low texture setting, the reflection is a slightly bit more messy. At the epic texture quality, the reflection looks a bit cleaner. Probably this is due to the reflecting material being of a higher quality texture at epic, but well, as long as that is the only thing, I would still choose the low texture qualities for my little bit of win in FPS. For shadows we chose high, and here you see why. That's a cool rhyme, isn't it? Thought of it myself. Yes, the poet I will become. On the low setting, there are no shadows. At medium setting, the shadows look a little bit less detailed. And when the shadows are moving around, you see a bit of blocks of shadows moving around. It looks just a little bit more messy than it does on high. And the performance difference between medium and high isn't that big. So I would rather spend a little bit more in FPS to make the shadows look just that little bit better. Graphics wise, I think high and epic settings don't differ that much from each other, but each look good. At high, this setting runs about 7-8% better than on epic, so let's stick with epic for the optimized settings. In the next scene we look at post-processing settings. Post-processing does a couple of things in this game. Motion blur, lens flare and bloom are mentioned in the settings menu, but I also think it takes care of ambient occlusion. So in this scene you see ambient occlusion below the trash cans, in the window pane, in the corner of the building, and below the plant and next to the plant. Now on low, as often as with ambient occlusion, the effect is mostly gone. And without ambient occlusion, objects seem to float or not be grounded in the world. All other setting levels seem to be about the same in effect. So you would say we can go for medium, with the biggest performance win between medium, high and epic. However, as mentioned before, post-processing does more things. And here we see some reflections you have from your helmet, I think. Not sure what the reflection is supposed to be, but it's gone on the medium level and it's still there on the high level. So although medium gives you a performance win of about 6% and high only gives you a performance win of about 2% compared to the epic settings that is, I would still go for high. I'm not sure what more effects you would lose if you go for the medium setting and I don't know if it's worth the performance loss. Now I don't really think you would miss these effects if you set this setting to medium. So if you're in a need of FPS, turn this setting to medium. But for now, for the optimized settings, high it is. The effects quality. We'll have a very short look side by side to look at the performance differences. After that we'll look full screen because the effects are seen better that way. Performance wise, low is performing the best of course. But you can already see you lose the screen space reflections. And you get basic cube maps as reflections. That is not something we want. Medium is performing slightly better than high but it's not even 1% I think. And why you don't want medium, you see in the middle. The moving text is shining through the ground in the back. And that is not something that should happen. And because it shouldn't happen, I would say stick at least with high. And lastly, high is performing about 6% better than epic settings. For the optimized settings though, I would suggest sticking to epic. Let's look at epic then. You see some reflections from the screens on the building on the left. You see reflections are screen space because they stop after the part that is on screen while the screen definitely goes on. But well, reflections are also a bit softer so on the ground it's not a mirror like surface but it's a bit of a rougher surface and you see that in reflections. And also check those bricks on the left below the screens. Each individual brick has a bit of a shadow. And then switching effects quality to high, you'll notice that those shadows of the bricks are gone. So the street part seems a bit more flat, it loses its feel of depth. Next we see that reflections are more clear. So the rough floor seems to be more mirror like this way and it actually shouldn't. Other than that however, I still think the look and feel of the game is great. So when you are really in need of FPS, you could consider running the game with effect settings set to high instead of epic. But I'll stick with epic for the optimized settings however. But let's quickly look at medium, and it's not so much difference there. Just that bit of screen shining through the ground which is weird. And then the low setting, you lose the screen space reflections. It does give you a performance win of 18% however, but I don't think it's worth it. Also on low I found this a bit funny. Since you lose the screen space reflections you get a cube map, 
but the cube map is static, so the moving text is not moving at all in the reflection. And then real quick, the high versus epic in effects quality, we already saw that the reflections of rough surfaces are more mirror-like on high, but you see it here on the wooden floor as well. No, I don't think high looks bad, it's just epic looks better and more realistic. For the view distance, side by side you don't really see the problems with the lower view distance well, I think. Performance wise you don't win that much with the view distance in this level. This is a smaller world of course, so the performance win in a match where worlds are a lot bigger could be bigger as well. But here it's just 3%. On low setting you see that the house is missing all kinds of detail. On medium and high you don't see that wire that connects the fire block to the ceiling. But well, let's do some moving tests. So on low you'll see all kinds of things popping on the house when moving. And the tree on the right is switching a level of detail. Very distracting if you ask me. On medium we can stand a bit further back because the details pop in from farther away. The pop in however is about the same. On high we can stand even further back. Walking towards the house we see some pop in on the windows, but mainly we see some LOD switches in the trees in the back. And I still find this rather distracting, but I'm always quite sensitive to pop in I think. So that leaves us with the epic setting for view distance. You still see some pop in, or at least something happening to the windows on the house, but that's about it. The trees in the back also are still switching LOD level, but it seems a bit less intrusive. It seems like more of a morphing to the next level instead of a hard switch. Don't really know if I'm just imagining it or if it's real, but anyways, set the view distance to epic, I would say. Foliage quality, we can be quick about this. There are no differences at all, but I think this is not the correct test. In the setting menu, the description reads, controls the density of foliage across the levels. So I think you will have more trees or bushes walking around a level instead of the bushes or trees being more full. But well, I haven't really tested these differences. Mainly because I didn't want to ruin anyone's game by not playing and just standing still or looking around. So therefore I leave this setting to epic. Well, anyway, with my skill level, it probably doesn't matter if I'm standing still or looking around or actively playing the game. But, well, motion blur and lens distortion. Just switching these on and off. But by switching the motion blur level, I see the frame rate switch as well. So apparently motion blur has impact on the frame rate. About 2% win in FPS if you turn motion blur off. I will leave it on because I always like motion blur, but I haven't really done a test with it. Lens distortion doesn't really seem to have a performance win, so set this to whatever you like. I will leave it on. But that is it. Looking at the game running with these optimized settings, I think it looks great and it plays great. It's unfortunate that these settings don't help you get better at the game because I really suck at this. Well, perhaps it doesn't help that I'm playing on a controller against people using keyboard and mouse should perhaps play the game only against console people. But well, I hope this video helps you get the game to an even more optimal performance so you can rob those faults and cash out. Thank you for watching the finals, or at least this video about it. Now in two weeks I'll be back, maybe with a look at Pal World, but maybe it's a video about something else. I think Pal World took the world by surprise, so it might be fun to have a look at that game. But on the other hand, it's not really my type of game, I guess. Well, not that the finals really was my type of game, but still. If you have any suggestions about what I should look at, let it know in the comments. And otherwise, I'll see you again in two weeks. If you can't get enough of me, have a look at my optimized settings video for Tekken 8. How do?